Welcome back to How China Works. I'm Brendan Davis. Our co-host, Inging Lee, will be with me just very shortly. This is our very special first episode ever of How China Works Live. This is from a live show we did at the Bookworm here in Beijing, which is a really great cafe and restaurant and bar if you're in Beijing and want a great place to hang out. That is one of them. The subject of this week's show is a lady named Fu Han. Now, she wears many hats. Among other things, she's the manager of Mark Levine, the musician who was last week's guest. Fu Han tells her side of their origin story. You can hear his version of it on last week's show. But we mostly talk about Fu Han about other things in her life. We do bring up Mark towards the end of the interview to also do a little Q&A with her, and they even play a couple of songs at the end. But the focus of this episode is Fu Han. Now, Fu Han is an accomplished businesswoman here in China. She has also found several new niches of her life as a music manager and musician playing and performing with and managing Mark Levine. She is also a documentary filmmaker now, and her very first short doc is really the main subject of this episode. She did a documentary on a lady named Isabel Crook, who she calls Grandma. Isabel is grandma to a lot of people. What makes Isabel unique among many, many, many things, she is technically Canadian. She is from Canada, but she was born in Chengdu to parents who were early educators here in China, and Isabel is almost 104 years old. She has lived the vast majority of those years here in China. She was gone a few years back to Canada, but she's mostly been here. And Fu Han has been friends with her for about 10 years and decided to make this documentary as Isabel is, of course, getting older and still has all these great stories to tell and share with everybody. So Fu Han decided to learn how to make a documentary film. And if you've ever done that, it's not that easy. She did a really, truly great job. And I'm not just being nice to a guest by saying that. Now, there is a link to this documentary online. It's on a Chinese website, but it's really easy to find the play button. And that link is in the show notes to this audio podcast. There was also a multi-camera video shoot going on for our event. And there are approximately five cameras that I need footage from. And once I get all of these, or assuming I get enough anyway, I will do my best to put together a video version of this show for you, which is really what we're most excited about releasing. But this audio portion is a lot of fun too. Now, I am not including the audio for the video in this podcast because you really need the visuals to go along with this. But you could create sort of your own multimedia adventure by watching the film via the link in the show notes and then listening to this podcast. And you would have a very similar experience and know what we're talking about. But this podcast stands on its own. Even if you haven't seen the film, you are going to get it. You're not going to be lost. And if anything, you are going to be more motivated to see that film than you are at this exact moment. And lastly, but not leastly, Isabel herself was our very special surprise guest. Isabel was brought by her caretaker. She had several longtime friends and former students who came with her to support, and she is so sweet. She speaks up a few times, and we get a mic to her. Now, the format of what you're going to hear and the format of what the evening was is Inging and I did an introduction. Then we ran the film, which again, we will kind of fade out and fade back up here. We don't have that whole 24-minute chunk of audio. Then we introduced Fu Han. We did our interview with her. There was a moment where Isabel had a few things to say, and then we let her leave. And actually, in the evening, we took a short break, let everyone have drinks and whatnot. Then we began the interview again. I've edited that so that it's just a very quick transition. We talked to Fu Han about so many things. Then we brought up Mark, and that was a special treat. And lastly, they played, which was maybe the perfect way to end the evening. Overall, it was a very, very special night, and there are more of these to come. We already have several How China Works lives in the works right now. I can't wait to tell you more about those. I should have some news next week to let you know about the next one that's coming up. One last note for me is that there are a few audio gremlins here and there. It was a live event. And there are a lot of microphones in the room. And so, you know, of course, someone has to run the soundboard. And sometimes a mic wasn't brought up into the sound mix as fast as possible. And that's what we were getting our feed from. But overall, I think it mastered out pretty well. So I really hope you enjoy it. It does not ruin the legibility or enjoyment of the show. Please enjoy this very special How China Works Live with Fu Han. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Bookworm and to our very first How China Works live event. Woo! Give yourselves a round of applause. My name is Brendan Davis, and... 
And my name is Ying Ying Li. We are your co-host. We are your host. Exactly. And in case you're not familiar with us, I have some notes to help me remember sometimes. How China Works is a weekly podcast designed to do two things: to help foreigners become China smart, and to help Chinese people who are trying to go global to better understand the strange people they meet when they do that. Now, season one of our show was a crash course in China. If you haven't heard it, who's heard it? Who's who's heard the show? Let's get a little hands. Okay, it's respectable. Good. We have room to grow. We have room to grow this audience. The crash course in China spent eight weeks where we did daily shows. So it was forty shows in total where we talked about all these different aspects of how East and West can better understand each other and better cooperate, which is part of the life's work of this lovely lady we will introduce in just a moment. We covered everything from Chinese business dinners to dealing with official meetings to work situations, social life. Dating, understanding youth culture, things like that. For instance, we talked about how Mianza and Guanxi are part of traditional Chinese culture, but we also talked about what that means in practice, so that people could best cooperate across borders. Now, throughout all of this, our goal has been to increase mutual respect and understanding. And in the words of my co-host here, her favorite phrase: "Building bridges, not walls." And we are in the middle of our season two right now, where we invite wonderful cross-cultural thought leaders. They are coming from around the world, different countries, multicultural community, to talk about their understanding about China.、Uh, but they are also equipped with fabulous、uh, diversity thinking, cultural intelligence, and East meet West approaches. Like tonight, we are going to present a wonderful one here for all of you. And that's one of the direction. But the, equally importantly, we have a second direction when we interview Chinese global voice. Because for decades, when China、uh, opened up, right, we have a lot of students, Chinese people, going global, and there's a lot of stories in and outside of China need to be heard. We truly want to bring this understanding. So we also want people around the world to hear Chinese tell their intimate stories, their engagement with the world, especially from a millennials' perspective. So we also have that particular focus. One of the examples we bring here,、um, we want to share a little bit more about our season two because right now we have、uh, over 30 episodes recorded. Our goal is to find the best cross-cultural bridges in the world. And how to bring the understanding? Because because of every cross-cultural bridges here in the world in today, like 2019, in such a vocal world like VUCA, an uncertain world, we really need those people who can focus on bringing understanding. So we have a wonderful guest here today,、uh, Miss Fu Han. And later we have a podcaster with her. And most importantly, we're really, really grateful that we have the chance to invite Miss Isabel. Yes, Miss Isabel, Isabel Crook, Crook, who actually is 104 years old and born in China, Sichuan Province. Spent 100 years in China, and、uh, he,、uh, she, and her husband. We're the early founders, actually, for the Beijing Foreign Study University, Beijing uh, Yu, uh, Yuan University. So, and cultivating a lot of、uh, early diplomats, English speakers and diplomats from China. So let's give a, a huge applause、yes. to her. Thank you. Oh, oh, careful! No need. Oh, wow. Okay. You want to say something to us? She said, "Thank you very much."、Oh. Thank you very much. I'll say that again in my life. <laughs> thank you, you. Thank you. It's just because someone like Isabel and Fu Han, and we could have this moment. Thank you so much for joining us. So the program is as follows. We're doing this little introduction now, and we want to recognize Isabel right away. She's seen this film a lot, so she may not watch the whole film. But we're going to run the film for you. It's about 24 minutes, and it's really, really great. Has anybody seen the film yet? Has anyone seen the film online besides? Okay, Mark's seen it. Oh, a few people. 
you are seriously in for a treat. That was the beginning of this entire event tonight, was to bring this film here to the bookworm. Next up is that we will interview Fuhan, as Ying just said, and we will do that for the majority of our show. We're recording all this, as you can tell, audio and video, and we're gonna cut out the mistakes, and, and my mistakes mostly, and we'll make this look and sound great, and then this will be a podcast and a video cast, and we will have QR codes up later so you can find and track this, and you can find out how to see this. And towards the end of Fuhan's interview, we will bring up her musical friend and collaborator, Mr. Mark Levine, who is also in the audience. We will, we will talk with Mark a bit. Mark was our guest on last week's How China Works. There is an hour and a half of us having a great time talking to Mark. So if you're new to the show, you can check this out here tonight. You can enjoy Mark's interview, and then this will be up by the end of the week. But unless singing has anything, I think we're going to play the film for uh, you. One last yeah. thing. This is a very precious moment for every single of us, especially, and we are here to witness something maybe maybe we couldn't see very often in our life. I really want everyone to enjoy tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I will give us a little help to uh, play the movie. And everyone, please enjoy. Big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so very much. We are honored that Isabel wants to stay with us here. Don't forget, after we have our podcast, we will be doing some mixing and mingling and some beverages, drinking out here, courtesy. Uh, well, not courtesy, but here at the Bookworm. So let's not get carried away. If she is ready, without further ado, Ingi, would you like to tell everyone about our special guest? For the interview tonight? Our special guest, our great cross-cultural leader tonight, is Miss Fu Han, who is a, a wonderful Chinese businesswoman, musician, and now a filmmaker. We're really honored to, to have her today to share with us a little bit more about this documentary, like what are the stories behind it, and how she overcame all kinds of challenges to make this, and what does it mean to people right now who actually want to do her job, do her work. Without further ado, please welcome Fu Han. Come on up and join us. Let you, let you fight your way in here. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. It's actually feel like Hollywood. <laughs> um, Katie, I, I, I want to, my dream want to be a Hollywood actress, but now I become a filmmaker. And all of that, I should thank Isabel Crook. Oh, I'd like to thank you very much for your introduction and for your support for all the work that we've done in the mountains. Thank you. Thank you, Grandma. I'm sorry. <laughs> the beautiful actress is... <laughs> well, every time I watch this movie, my own movie, which is Isabel's story, I got tears in my eyes. I'm sure you guys moved by that movie, but Isabel's a wonderful story, and she recorded her, recorded China for her entire life, amazing age. And thank everyone to be here tonight with us. Thank you. Please, uh, please join us over here, and we will, uh, we will kick off the part where you have to look at us now. <laughs> So to get started with, and um, Ian, could you hand her one of the mics, please? Thank you very much. To get started, and the way we do this, if you have not heard, most of you have not heard the show, is we sort of alternate our questions, and um, we have actually, of course, prepared a lot of questions, but we're mostly going to let the conversation go where it leads us, and I'm going to get you a tissue. <laughs> Aw, wow. This is, this is the first time someone's uh, cried at the beginning of the interview. Normally that's later. <laughs> Normally, normally that's much later. Um, but we, we would like to start, and you started by talking a bit about, of course, this wonderful documentary. And this is your first film. And again, I, I'm a film producer. It's what I do for a living. I make films. I've made several documentaries and stuff. 
And I was so impressed when I saw this. I, you all see that she did a really great job, right? We're not just being nice to a guest. She did a fantastic job. What motivated you? Of course, your friendship. And then how did you, how did you begin to prepare to make a documentary? You've never done that. How did you get your head around this? Well, I think all about now. Yeah, I never, I never did any documentary before. It's my first documentary. And uh, when I uh, got back from United States for my business trip, uh, Isabel fell. And um, I think uh, uh, I have to do something. And uh, uh, so, and uh, the friendship, we have more than 10 years friendship. And uh, I always visit Isabel, and she just so kind and treated me so nice. You know, I'm a Bei Piao. Bei Piao means the, I think most of us are Bei Piao. <laughs> Bei Piao means not Beijing, not uh, born in Beijing. Okay, we, we have a, maybe a difficult life in here. But Isabel always care about other people. And she always, and the, Tonight, many of uh, Isabel's friends, we have old friends here. If you would like to introduce, and yeah. people can sort of raise their uh, hand or Pamela, stand as they wish. Edwin, Gregor from Australia. Mm. Austria, Austria, sorry. And, uh, and, her, and, and her, did you mention her Ai is right here? Yes, and uh, Ai Su Zhen here. You know, Su Zhen been working for Isabel for her entire life. Uh, 您是什么时候在哪家工作的? So 1994. Wow, okay. Start to work for Isabel. Okay, uh, and uh, this is really like a family, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I talk to Su Zhen Ai, she talk about, you know, Every time I got home for Spring Festival, because Spring Festival is so important for Chinese people. So she went back for Spring Festival. She said, I miss grandma. I miss her. I said, I have the same feeling. I said, every time, you know, I, I'm a businesswoman. I have trips, you know, business trips all over. So every time I went out, I miss Isabel. I think Isabel in Beijing is like my home in Beijing. Yeah, so probably you know, don't understand the feeling, but I think all the old friends here, they know how Isabel cares about other people. Right, Pamela? And every time we went out for dinner, Isabel just paid. Wow. We should pay. Those are know? the best friends, aren't they? <laughs> Just saying, I'm available. <laughs> I've, I've been known to eat. I'll, I'll treat too, sometimes. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, because Isabel gave her, her uh, card uh, for. Uh, do you have the number? I can write it down. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. So every time they just uh, you know use uh, Isabel's uh, Isabel's cards, I, I so I talked to I said I talked to Isabel's son. I said. <laughs> you are too old to uh, that, that he said, mm, you are too old to eat your mother's food. Yes. You speak Chinese very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Isabel's love to me, I think I have to do something. I really need to do something. Something either I never done that before. Okay. I remember I first, uh, I had no camera, and I have no recorder. Mm -hmm. So I borrowed a recorder from Mark. I borrowed a camera from another friend. Mm -hmm. I w went to Isabel's home and interview her every day. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. The first uh, <laughs> day. Yeah, it, it's hard to make a bad movie. It's really hard to make a good movie. <laughs> well, I think because Isabel's story is such an amazing story, Let's make the, you know, the movie. So it's not just me, it's Isabel, really, yeah. So what were the hard moments when you were trying to accomplish this task? I mean, how long did it take for you to make this uh, documentary complete? Um, in Chinese words, we call it a 抢救性拍摄. Yeah. What, what is that in non-Chinese? 
<laughs> a long right. time. It's really urgent to film. Understood. Yeah. How, what, what was your filming period? Like, when did you start? Uh, when did you feel like you had completed it? Uh, I just, after that, uh, when I come back, and I just started right away, and uh, I, I filmed Isabel about uh, one and a half month every day. Okay. And uh, uh, it's not... Uh, uh, her emotion is upside down, so you c maybe you can't uh, get the uh, uh, words for many days. But after that, I put the script, I put, put all the Isabel what uh, sh she said, and I put it in the paper, I type it in, and I hand it to her son, and he said, wow, those words she never told me before. Well, nice, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, some people yeah. don't know uh, who who is familiar with how documentary is made or reality TV, which is sort of a similar cousin of, of documentaries. They're you know it's real people and typically real situations, but a lot of times you have to help people be themselves. It's hard to get people to get over the idea of oh you're shitting me now, so it's it can be very tricky. So you can sort of help, and even you saw it in our introduction. I know what I'm going to say, but I have notes to sort of like jog my memory, right? We have bullet points. So did you find that that made it go smoothly once you sort of helped her with, okay, let's talk about this, and then you talk about that, okay, and then let's talk about this, and then you talk about, did you do it in kind of pieces like that? that that's how I often have done it. The, the interesting thing, the first day I filmed her, and <laughs> she walked away from me. <laughs> <laughs> had, you, had you had enough already she one day and you're out? <laughs> I was, uh, well, so then I um, get together my camera on my uh, stand. Then I went home. Then the second day, uh, she said, mm, I need to take some pills. <laughs> then uh, when, she, when, when I gave her pills and, uh, to calm down, and her son came in, and he said, wow, why did my grandma eat pills? <laughs> Why you gave pills to grandma? So I was <laughs> the good thing because this family trusts me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know you really can't just uh, a TV station or other people come to film her. Then you know when I continue going there every day, and uh, Grandma Isabel realized that we are working together. Right. Yeah. And she said. You are the person never gave up. <laughs> That's what it takes. Yeah, she that's said, what it takes. You are the person when, when you're working, you never give up. I said, mm, "That's right, Grandma." <laughs> and other stories that uh, in this 24 minutes documentary that you like to share with our audience today, like any other kind of stories. Uh, yes, of course. Home? Yeah, many things uh, because it's a film. Actually, I use some film language. Probably you, d you don't, uh, I, I want to show some. One is uh, uh, there is a tree, the yellow tree. I use that to represent David. Why? David is Isabel's husband. And um, after David died, uh, he gave the body to the hospital. Yeah. So they don't really have a grave. Okay, so Isabel planted that tree, planted that tree, and that tree growing. Uh, you that know. that tree in the film specifically, because yes. that's a big yes. tree. Wow, yes. that's and pretty cool. Every night, every every day, I walk with Isabel down to uh, to have a walk, and Isabel said, "Let's go to a garden, that secret garden." Oh, okay. That's really their love story, and. Uh, when you see the movie, you can tell how how much Isabel love David. You know, I never be, I never met David, but I think he's a great man. Yeah, the spirit and, the spirit lives on, and he deserves Grandma's love. We, you, yes, you did an excellent job with this. And again, you mentioned you you filmed, you met, and you filmed every, like for every day for a month and a half. That's probably a lot of material, and then you cut it down to a short film. Do you do you have enough material that you could cut like a TV series out of this, or could you cut like a longer documentary if you had enough time and patience to do that? I 
I want to actually I I want to make this as the the childhood because it's uh, about uh, her childhood. Maybe this is the first one. The second one probably I'll I'll go to uh, Li Xian or Hai Yuan to film her. Uh, you know the the anthropology research place. Yeah, and another thing, uh, the jade. The jade is Isabel's jade, and uh, uh, before I went to the Bai Lu Ding, the mountain, to film that, I went to uh, Isabel's. I went to Grandma. I said, Grandma, tomorrow morning I'm going to Bai Lu Ding, and she said, What? What? Will you take me? Oh. So this is a, this is a dream. Uh, so, but I was uh, shocked because. Uh, you know, in this age, it's really, yeah, yeah, and uh, I don't think uh, her sons agree with that. So <laughs> it's kind of a last-minute trip. I mean, if you've been talking yeah. about it and planning it, so it might I not borrowed have been a shock. the jade from grandma, yeah, to represent she uh, is there. She was there. Oh, okay. And another thing about a jade, jade is uh, very special in China, and uh, Isabel is an anthropologist, and. Uh, I want to show her idea, what her thought. So she think she always taught me about. Uh, she went to rural China to do research, anthropology research. So she has uh, the thoughts and ideas. She said, rural China and uh, the city should be like a tai chi, in balance. Yeah, that's how the China now. You you can tell in Beijing in the big cities the cities you know Chinese people we make cities very fast right. maybe right. over one night there is a bridge it's it's true it's uh, yeah it's changing every day but in other in like uh, rural China some uh, countryside now we have empty villages Kongxin Chun okay so how to make rural China and the city in balance. And uh, Isabel recorded the uh, rural China for her entire life. She went to, you know, she's uh, you know, a miss, a xiaojie in the city in Chengdu. She grew up there. And, uh, you know, I went to Sichuan. I climbed the mountain. I was thinking, how did she do that? Every day. That's really tall, you know. It, it looks, yeah, I'm not going up myself. <laughs> I'll send a drone. <laughs> yeah. So I need to use the film to show people Isabel's idea, what, uh, what uh, sh you know, her thought. Yeah. Right. During this, the preparation of this documentary, um, I, I saw a lot of uh, Chinese culture elements, including the Yu, the Jade culture. I, I, I'm sure that Isabel has a lot of, you know, appreciation for or certain elements in the rural area. So, did she tell you um, during this preparation, during this process of make, uh, filmmaking, that anything that he liked about rural China? Oh, she loves mountains. She loves mountains in China, and uh, and. <laughs> And she told me why she has such a long life because she always climbed mountains. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so many people ask, "Wow!" Because uh, Isabel on my WeChat, she become a Wang Hong, you know, because I I I I be with her all the time, you know, one at least once a week. So I send a WeChat, and all the people ask, "Wow! How?" How come she has such a long life? And uh, what did she eat? What, what does her... <laughs> right. what, 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 what do you eat? What yeah. do you like to eat, <laughs> Isabel? <laughs> What's her food? What do you like to eat? I beg your pardon? Oh, what, what foods do you like to eat to, 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 to be so healthy? Yes. I'm just... I've enjoyed this very much because you... You praise me. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but we're we're admiring of your long life. I'm gonna. I need to take some notes, okay. obviously. <laughs> and speak. Speak. Isabel, Grandma <laughs> likes to have ice cream. Ooh, oh. we get along better than you think in this case. And I, and the bean pi jiao. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> Excellent choice as well. <laughs> Glad that you've given me this good opportunity to talk about things I'm interested in. And I'm glad that so many of you have shown interest in these things which I think are very touching and important. And I hope the result will be that you'll be particularly interested in what's happening in these places. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that actually, that's an excellent way to bring us into kind of the next portion. Where yes. I will talk you less and she will talk more. And you talking look. about Fuhan's journey and how she sort of had this orientation toward what you might think of as socially active approach to business as well as her life. I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Ying Ying, here now. How do you get involved in this? I mean, in the beginning, we'd like to show you a story about how did you become doing this kind of cross-cultural work, especially when it comes to bringing more understanding um, about China to the world. Mm. How? Uh, I think I've been working for this for for a long time. Yeah, and one thing I want to talk about uh, Isabel, about uh, I talk about uh, her ask me, can I take her home to Sichuan? Actually, I did that. Okay, I'm not, I'm not an answer your your cultural question now, but I want to talk about I took Isabel to Sichuan. We uh, did it. I made the dream happen this year, and uh, in last uh, last month. Yes, last month, and uh, we took a high-speed train. Uh, wait a moment, I think uh, Isabel, yeah. Give us just one second. Um, I think Isabel might want to go. Are, are, do, you, do you want to, do you, would you like to take off for a second? No problem. <laughs> so she wants to take off for a minute? It's okay. It's, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. No, I think she doesn't want to go. Okay. Guys, what we'll do, we'll take a quick five-minute break. We'll let Isabel go out first, okay? And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so, so much. Such a, such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. It was quite an experience to be able to talk to you people. <laughs> We're really glad you joined <laughs> about, us. Thank you so much. A subject that I'm interested in, <laughs> very much interested in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so please give Isabel uh, room to, to exit. And then we'll take about a five-minute break, and you can use the restroom or grab a drink if you wish, and then we will resume, okay? We'll give a little bit of a warning to give everybody a chance. Thank you so much. Let, let her, let her uh, get out safely first. All right, welcome back from our quick break for How China Works Live. Isabel was such a good sport. She joined us for a long time, and then we let her make her escape for the night. But we're back, and we are going to turn it over to my co-host, Ying Ying Li. So back to Ying Ying Li and your next question for Fuhan. Well, first of all, let Fuhan to continue uh, her story with Isabel about Sichuan, right? Yeah, it, it, it was an amazing night, right? It is now amazing night. Isabel climb. Bookworm has no elevator. Isabel climb here, okay, yeah. and climb down. And she is 103 years old. She was going to be 104 uh, 04 soon. Okay, that's um, it's actually our dream together. Because when I talk to Isabel, I said, I'm going to Bailu Ding, where you spend your childhood there. And she said, will you take me? I was, uh, I don't know how to answer her. But that's her dream in my heart. So I continue to talk to her son. And that's, that's uh, uh, Michael Crook said, 就是你,老是勾引奶奶. <laughs> so, Finally, we made a trip last month, and uh, her three son 
and uh, she and uh, Ai Yi. So you, uh, you can tell the Ai Yi worked for her for uh, her whole life. The Ai Yi is not young anymore, you know, 50s, 60s, and her son. So I really took a old age tourism group. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, they're not here to hear that, so hopefully they don't mind. And because of that, I cut my hair. It's the first time I cut my hair in, in my life. Why? Because I have, to, I have so much responsibility. I need to you know, take care of Isabel. I have to take care of everyone. And uh, I have to... No, no time for no fashion? Time. Yeah, no time yeah. for... <laughs> and I have to carry the camera. Finally, I bought a camera. And uh, not a borrow a camera. Finally, well, I, I went the I other way. I just, I'm just not cutting it and pulling it back. It's the same idea. But you know what? From the first day when I talking to her, I said, uh, uh, "We're going to okay. We're planning going to Sichuan, and Isabel practice climb her stairs to her home every day, three times a day, and because she knows we're going to go to Bai Lu Ding, the mountain. The mountain is almost two thousand meters high." And uh, so that's a dream. I took her there, and uh, she hugged me. She said, we made it. I was tearing, tearing really bad on the mountain. I, um, so the first day, we got the train tickets, and she was really excited. And she can't calm down. And her son has to you know, take her to hospital to you know, get some pills and shots to, to calm her down. Because this is really exciting. She never been out of Beijing for more than 20 years. So, so you taking her to go back to her, her home, oh, that, that no, no, was no, her no. first. No, actually she went to uh, uh, Sichuan in 2004, I think, 2004. And, uh, my, my film talk about a little bit about uh, her love story with David. Mm. And uh, she actually went to Sichuan in 2004. That was uh, probably in her 90s, right? Uh, and uh, when she first uh, met David, they, they said to each other, OK, let's meet at the Da Du He, the Tie Suo Qiao, the bridge. Yeah, the, it's a revolution bridge. Every, every Chinese uh, uh, person know that. And in that time, no phone, and no clock, no time, and, uh, and you know, no WeChat. And <laughs> they set what did up you a do day, before WeChat? <laughs> and, and they set up a day, said, let's meet there. And they made it. Then they fell in love, and they got married. Yeah, so, wow. so that bridge is really her love. And I remember a um, couple of years ago, there is a, um, in, in south of Beijing, there was a place you know, acting like uh, the, the bridge, but uh, it's uh, steel. And a uh, couple of years ago, she was uh, 102, 102, and uh, we took her there. And she was getting really excited. She climbed on the, <laughs> the steel and pretended to be the Tie Suo Qiao. And, <laughs> and you can tell the, you know, the, the love place in her heart is so, you, you know, is so important for her. And, and after that, she went to Sichuan. She got uh, uh, really, uh, she can't, uh, uh, her son told me she can't walk. So she has a wheelchair. So in that time, after that, uh, her family afraid to take her out of Beijing. So last month is the first uh, trip for her to go to Sichuan. And uh, we spent eight hours on the high-speed train. And another thing is, you know, I always travel by airplane. I didn't know the high-speed train, the two hats, it's going this way, and you can't go through. So I bought a ticket, it's a car number eight for Isabel and uh, her son. It's the you know, first class or something. You know, uh, so she can lay down. 
and the rest of us we bought uh, uh, the the second class with is uh, car number ten. So I think eight to ten, mm, it's quite close, but <laughs> can't go through. I was <laughs> and she was up there like a queen, laid back in those uh, Snoop Dogg seats, and you're yeah, you're yeah. back in steerage. Yeah, and we didn't know that until I got on the train. Yeah, so I asked all the people to help. Well, it's a uh, but finally we made it, and uh, it's a uh, amazing trip. The documentary just the first step. I've been, this is my heart for Isabel, and uh, I know the heart, the friendship between me and Isabel. She is not just my grandma, she's also my friend, and I like to help. I always help, and uh, I did the film. This is the first step. Actually, I connect with the local government. I said, look, Isabel, this is a senior uh, foreign expert. A wonderful person, anthropologist, record China. You need to build a museum for her. And, okay, uh, so a yeah. museum is in the works? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, so the local government said yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, I'm talking about uh, I help people and how I involve the, you know, with the. <laughs> so, the next one, I want to tell how I help Mark. So Mark, Mark Levine is my same partner, and uh, I was uh, her agent. Yeah. And uh, when she, he came to Beijing, maybe more than how many years ago? 12 years ago, yes. And uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, we met at the MUC, the Minzu University, the, the, the gate. And uh, he, uh, he asked the guards for help. And the guards come speak English. And he asked me. And I always like to help people. But um, at that time, my English is not that good. I mean, my English now is very good. Uh, <laughs> it's not perfect. It, it, but at that time, it, it's like. <laughs> it ain't bragging if you can do it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, a little bit. Then uh, he asked, where is the international building? I'm, I was not a, uh, the, the student in MUC. But uh, I said, OK, well, I just, but I live there. I always live there. So I said, so maybe in that building, let me just show you. So I guide her to the international building because it said international on the building. So I said, probably that one. What about you go there? And uh, then that night, I got a blaming message from Mark. And he said, why you show me to the uh, girl's dormitory? <laughs> I had a feeling. No, it was an accident, right? It was an accident. <laughs> Where else would I take you? <laughs> So, and uh, he said, okay, I'm leaving tomorrow night. What about you? I, I still got a whole day in Beijing. What about you show me around in Beijing? I said, okay, I can probably make it up, made up you know. I arranged my things. I showed her to the Forbidden City and the Tiananmen, and uh, then become friends. Then uh, after that, uh, he come to Beijing and uh, he teach in that university, and uh, I know she's. He start to write songs. Uh, he wrote uh, like uh, ten songs. So I still want to help. I said, okay, what about uh, I take you to the studio to make the record the songs uh, your on your idea, birthday? Right? Yeah, on your birthday, and uh, so you can have a birthday party. Then um, we record the songs. Uh, he gave the, you know, I asked my, my classmates from the Renmin University, we handmade uh, about uh, 30 or 40, you know, uh, CD, handmade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we spent uh, the afternoon in the cafe. And uh, then uh, he gave away to, you know, the people who joined the party, then still have some rest, rest of the uh, CD. I said, what about I help you to Give to send to the music studio. See any music studio want to sign you up? 
so you can be a star in China. <laughs> then, so I helped, uh, yeah, I helped her, him to send all the music, the CD, and no company answered that. So. <laughs> I'm sure it's not a reflection on you, Mark. It's just the look I of the draw. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to like kind of cold pitch a thing like that. Hey, <laughs> now, now so to be fair, I, we've I heard a version that. of this from Mark. So this is very interesting. You, you listen to Mark's uh, episode of our podcast, which is the, currently the one that's. You go to our our page. Uh, that's the, the episode that's currently there, and you can hear Mark's detailed story via these links. So please continue. This is very good. We're getting both sides of the story. Uh, so I called every single uh, company, and somebody hung up my. Some people hung up my phone. I don't know what's going on. They pr they're pretty angry, even without talking to me. So <laughs> I called my teacher because my teacher has a has a friend is a big music uh, company boss. So I asked. I gave my phone number to her. And she said, "Okay, I will let her uh, let him call you." So we get on the phone. I explained, and he said, uh, "This guy named Mark, right?" I said, "Yes." Uh, he said, uh, "He's uh, from. He's not Chinese." I said, "No." So he speak no Chinese. I said, "Yes." He can't sing any Chinese. I said, "Yes." Okay. He said, no, "Perfect." No market in China. <laughs> okay, that's one. Second, is he young? <laughs> I said, he's pretty old. <laughs> okay, the third question. No comment. Does he have money? <laughs> money, yeah. <laughs> I said, he, he even has no guitar. He borrowed a guitar. Wow. She, she's selling very well, right? So, so if you need representation, <laughs> we got your gal right here. Available after the show. Was that? When was that? Actually, that's uh, uh, two thousand eight, uh, early eight, two, end of two thousand seven, I think. So I told Mark, "Your Chinese dream is broken." <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. this is a big music company boss. Yeah. Okay, and uh, he said, "How about you be my agent?" I said, "What?" The big company boss said no. Said this is definitely not. There is no market. And uh, what made you change your mind? Remember, yeah. you said you didn't want to do it, and then something caused you to change your mind. I know. I, I'm just, uh, you know. Yeah, we 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 have a lot of questions, but you just kind of keep on going here. So. <laughs> Yeah. Again, we are going to bring Mark up to get into this in some detail later, but we have other questions for you, so let's, uh, we don't, you don't have to remember every piece right now. So he kept asking me to be his agent. I said, no, 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 because I, I make, uh, you know, pretty comfortable life. I was a piano teacher, teach, I have my own method. I can combine uh, English, games, and, uh, you know, piano together. I, I you know... I'm better than other, you know, piano teacher because I can teach more, so and I can get more money. Can do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I said no. And uh, finally, uh, the, that's the beginning of 2008. That's before the Olympic game, and uh, I saw the TV said uh, some, you know, our torch. The torch. Yeah, yeah, the torch in uh, in other country been, you know, stoned or, you know, yeah, grabbed and, you know, it's not nice. So I think China between the world have a gap. Most of the people probably don't understand uh, China very well. And uh, so, I, so I was thinking, Mark, he wrote songs. In that time, he wrote probably 11 songs, but Every single song is about his true life, true experiences in China. So I was thinking, okay, so this use the music to tell the true story. So probably, you know, it's easy to people can accept and the people can listen and uh, probably people can understand China better. So I think, okay, I'll do, I'll do this job. I'll become your agent. So the first, uh, a good thing, Mark pay. 
Mark pay me. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's very important. Because, thing. Yeah, because, because you might not be able to see how her eyes lit up from. I'm just thought, you know. <laughs> Blinding. Because I, I I can't have a regular teaching job. I can't teach uh, you know teach the uh, piano mm -hmm, sure. because you you have to teach the kids every every day right. every month, uh, every week. So, but I don't know how to become be an agent. You know, I I went to Renmin University and uh, our teacher told us to get the 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 artist agent license, which everybody got. And now only me use it, and rest of my classmates sold them. <laughs> so, how to become agent? That's what we are talking about today. How China works. Okay, how China works? It's really how Chinese people work. I'm listening. <laughs> okay, I just want to use my story to tell everyone, and uh, most of the people here. Who are living in China probably decades, ten more than ten years, twenty years. There is a old China hand Gilbert here, and yeah. So everybody, most of the you guys are Zhong Guo Tong, but I just want to use my story to tell how China works. So I don't know how to be an agent, and I'm thinking, I I can think, you know. You know, in China words called "san si er hou xing." You think, then do it. Okay, before you do it, before you act, you think. So I have to think how to promote him in China. Okay, the boss already said he's not young, he's not xiao xian rou, right? And <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, young fresh meat for the non-Chinese speakers. <laughs> And, and who are listening to this going, what did that lady say? Yeah. Look it up. Okay. So uh, I'm thinking first I have to make, make him stand out. He's not that beautiful, you know. Wow. <laughs> she's, she's selling very well. <laughs> so I said, okay, first he needs a hat to cover his <laughs> How do you call that? Foley hat? <laughs> we, call, we, call, we call it wisdom. <laughs> well, in, in English, it's a forehead. I have a five head. So. But the problem is, Mark knows how to fight. And he rejects to put a hat on his head, on his dinosaur egg. Okay? Because he says, oh, this is each, this is a heart, whatever. So I bought, I had no money, but I, I went to a market, bought a, a lot of hats, so many different hats, and uh, maybe five kwai per piece, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe eight kwai, yeah. I bought a lot. And, okay, he's from American, American uh, cowboy. So I bought him a cowboy hat, and, uh, you know, normally you can wear baseball hat. On the baseball hat, I have another idea. So, okay, so all the, all the foreigners who come to China, you might think I have a Chinese name. But I'm thinking how to promote Mar Mark Levine. You first don't give him a Chinese name to, be pr to pretend to be a Chinese. Right. Because you can't stand out, right? Second, but how to make his name, I'll just translate it, Ma Ke Li Wen. And I have another idea. I put Ma Ke Li Wen on his head. So everybody know, oh, Ma Ke Li Wen, know his name. And uh, so nobody call him mm, Ma Ke Si. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everybody know his name. Then he will feel good. Mm. How come this guy know my name? Probably I'm famous. He, he said that when he came to when he came to record with us a few weeks ago, and he was saying, you know, I was on my way up, and people were calling my name, and then I realized I'm wearing my name on my hat. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I'm more famous than I realized. Yeah, so so to make him feel good, you know, you need to, you know, both sides. You need to make the audience, you know, in, yeah. So how to work together? This is to show how to work together. So hat and uh, ask him to grow beard okay oh wait, you didn't have the beard originally 
shrimp. Oh, okay. He, he wants to pretend he's young. Young as you. I, I just, I just <laughs> trimmed this off. Anybody who's got the video or sees a photo, or, I'm not sure what you're saying, but I'm going to interpret that in a way that flatters me. I had a full beard, and it's, it's all gray. What you don't wear, wear the skin, it's, it's all gray. And like about a, two weeks ago, I woke up and said, who's that old guy? And I shaved most of it off. So I want to make him stand out. So I'll, actually on the street, all the old men and the wave to him. Oh, beautiful beard. Da huzi, da huzi. <laughs> okay. The third thing, the logo is boots. But he rejected again. And we fight for being a one year to put his boots on and to put uh, to put the jeans in the boots, right? Inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he said the cowboy, the real cowboy, you know, doesn't look this way. I said, whatever, but the Chinese people want to see the boots. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's wearing like hush puppies tonight, so no boots. Okay, yeah, finally become this way. You know, it's a lot of the struggle. I had to get her permission tonight to not wear boots. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty street with, with Mark, yes. right? Yeah, so this is outside. This is the yes. Xinxiang. Yeah, yeah. And the inside, how to promote him, I need to get him get him shows. But I have no experiences. Okay, I think that the first the thing, the foreigners come to China is very important, is find a smart working partner. Mm. Like me. Very true, good partners are very important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you need to think how to do things right. and uh, how to do things in Chinese way. Okay, and uh, the, about the music, he always saying, you know, every single song is different. He said, this is unique. In America, we sing this way. I said, no, you can't sing this. You have to sing like Chinese way, okay? You have to follow the melody. Uh, lots of uh, fight. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how to get shows, that is very important. Give him opportunity to get on stage, to get the stage experiences, right? Uh, the first show uh, I get is the, is the 2008, the agent show. The agent show. Yeah, because uh, I went to the agent school, I got a license, so we have all the agents together. So I said, okay, this is 2008, and what about we organize a show? So I said, okay, Mark Levine is my client. He, have to, he has to get on the stage. That's the first show. And the first show, you not just get on stage, you need fans. So I have to call his student to pretend to be fans. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'll avoid my US political jokes right here. I'll just skip over that. Uh, so. From very first show, single show, we have, uh, you know, if we don't, before that, nobody know you, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody know you. you, you need to show up, you need the stage. So I looking for all the opportunities, any opportunities for him to get on stage. I went to the whole high bar street, I went to all the bars, I talked to them, and uh, finally through a friend said, okay, you can come to sing. Uh, and uh, on the second floor, which is not too many audience, okay, we sing there, it's pretty good. And we want to sing there again. And we talk, we went there, and the, the manager said, no, 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 on the phone. I said, okay, what about we go there? So we, I got Mark Levine, and he took the guitar. We went to the, the Ho Hai bar. I, I still remember the name, Jia Ding Fang. And the manager said, no, no, no. So in the December, the coldest Beijing weather, he didn't let us get in. And I continue to talk to him. And finally, and you know, after that, we become friends. Every time I film anything, any documentary uh, uh, of Mark, the, the TV wants to do that, and uh, I set up shows, I use his bar and for free. You know, so we, be, we become friends. Goals. Yeah, so you know, that's how Chinese people work, is never give up. And when you don't give up, other people will help you.
Okay, so I continue. So he didn't let us go get in, but uh, then finally we become friends. Okay, this is uh, this is just uh, one sample to get shows. I worked in the pretty cold Beijing weather, looking for the sign that okay, t this is a Beida some international festival. Okay, I called the. Uh, they that the, the phone, the, their phone to uh, I said uh, I introduce Mark. I said uh, what about he get on stage? So every single show, I start looking for that everywhere for him to get on stage. You it's traveled. Not easy. You traveled uh, with Mark um, all over China, right? That's after. That's after. Okay, that's after when people know him, get to know him, and uh, more opportunity come to looking for me. Okay, looking for us, and uh, so we get uh, shows. Now I've been, we've been, um, I think, uh, traveled uh, more than twenty-three provinces, and uh, I've been organized more than three hundred big shows, small shows. Okay, that's unbelievable. And we 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 are we only have limited time, so I want you need to be able to ask you a few other questions, mm -hmm. and then we're going to bring Mark up in here a little bit more from the man himself. So. I assume that might be a lot of uh, conflicts um, when you try to, you know, get the things done this time. But like when you're dealing with people, like bring Mark to local people, right? So you kind of want you, you have to do with government, you have to do with the local stakeholders, like the musician, other agents, right? Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you? When you were trying to really get things, you know, because you have to deal with multiple communities from very different cultural background here in China, do you have a story to share? Like, uh, I have lots of story because I'm not just to deal with Mark. I have to deal with all kinds of people, as you said, government people, organizer, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, people from different uh, countries. Uh, I think. Yeah, I, I know. I think the first thing, you have to be honest, okay? You have to be honest uh, yourself, and you have to uh, act quick, okay? I, um, so the very important show I got for Mark is 2009, Zhang Jiajie International Country Music Week. And the people come from 600, uh, 600 musicians come from 22 different countries uh, to Zhang Jiajie. And uh, I got this information online. They they were held held it, and I called them. They said no, uh, it's all already booked. Okay, every musician we booked from the uh, embassy and the culture department. And I keep calling them, keep calling them, and they said, how about you come to work with us? Uh, you, yeah. you were so persistent. So, so let me just put a pin in this. So what you were saying, yeah, you, I, your shortcut, so they were, through relationships they had, mm -hmm. they already had their slate. And so yes. that's part of the thing is to make those relationships. You have to have those relationships. Yes. So yeah, work for free. You need to work for free first, and then you can get something, you know. <laughs> so I said, I can come here to do volunteer, but I want Mark Levin to get on this, this show. And uh, they said, okay. So I went there, I deal with all kinds of things, all kinds of uh, everything, and... Uh, what did they need, need you most at the time, like for that period of time, 2009? Uh, to solve the problem between, you know, Chinese people with uh, other foreign uh, musicians. And <laughs> yeah, because the language, first is language, second is the culture, it's so different. Yeah. So and also get sponsors, all kinds of things. I work day and night, and uh, I remember there is a, a, a African group about uh, forty musicians, and they first they first get to Zhang Jiajie, and uh, uh, because it's the first music group, so all the media uh, went there, went to the airport to greet them, and they feel really good. And the second day. Because they are too early, so we send them to the tourism part, like the park uh, uh, on the mountain. And all the African musicians sit 
by the door, by the gate, and don't move. And the local people are really scared. <laughs> because they never, you know, in, in Zhang Jiajie, this is a, the mountain area. The local people didn't see foreigners, you know. And the special, you know, yeah, 40 Africans. And yeah, so they're really scared and they called us and uh, they don't know what to do. I said, what's going on? And they said, probably the first day the media was there and they asked, where is the media? Where is the cameraman? <laughs> I said, okay, I'll be the camera woman today. Uh -huh. <laughs> That I carried my camera, uh, camera, and uh, I went there. I talked to them. I said, "Okay, today I'm come here to film you, and uh, I will give all the materials to you." Why, and why, also, why they were actually sitting there in front of the door at the tourism spot? Like, uh, because the there reason? is nowhere to sit. <laughs> oh, because they arrived earlier. Uh, because uh, we send we send them to the tourism to a mountain. Uh, the Jing Chu, the you know the tourism park, and uh, they don't want to get in because they didn't see any cameraman. They didn't oh, they see, want to see the yeah, they are, yeah, they want to, the media to come. Yeah, yeah. So all kinds of uh, problem, like uh, you know the German German musicians uh, come here. They said uh, they they are not uh, saying they are not going to get on stage. Uh, ask why, and uh, because. The organizer said, we'll provide the music, the, the, the instrument to you. But actually, they didn't provide the instrument. Okay, so the German musicians said, okay, there is no instrument, we can't get on stage. So, but you need to get on stage. So I called all the music, uh, instrument uh, uh, factory. Okay, I called the boss, I said, okay, you need to sponsor the instruments, yeah. So I get the sponsors and also make the musicians, the German musicians happy and also the, you know, the event going smooth. So all kinds of things. You just, uh, you need to be honest and uh, you need to work on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will bring up Mr. Mark Levine now for a little bit of a chat. And so please take my seat. Now I am going to give you my mic which basically means, in theory, we'll ask you questions, but you'll probably talk amongst yourselves. Let okay. me start by saying we'll take a few minutes here. Oh, you can do that, too. All right. We'll take a few minutes, and again, Mark's episode, as I've said, is on this, this current How China Works. You can hear his side of some of this, but it, it syncs up pretty well with what she said. So, Mark, what has been your experience working with Fuhan? Tell the folks here what that's been like for you. Um, unlike anything I've ever done before, um, on the one hand, everything she said is true. And from the, the conflict uh, to the progress. And part of what happens is there's one particular uh, show that we've put to, that she put together. I participated in, but she's the one that organized the show. She conceived of it. It's a show called our, our actually what happened is in 2013, uh, Fu Han went from being an agent and a friend to being a musical partner. Because I play guitar, she plays Arhu. One of our points of conflict had been, I want you on stage with me. And her position was, I don't want to go on stage. So with the assistance of her father, who said, you need to join Mark on stage, she finally agreed. And since 2013, sometimes I perform by myself, but a lot of times, more often than not, we perform together. And we perform a variety of different things. So that was one point of conflict. But uh, once that began, she conceived of a show called uh, Fuhan, Mark Levine and the story of Inside Out. Inside Out is the English name of our musical duo. And what is the Chinese name? Xiu Wai Hui Zhong. I really like the name. Okay. So, and this tells the story. It tells the story of her and I, and we deal with our background and where we came from and how we met. 
and deal with how we came to play together. And it deals with all of the many, many disagreements that we had. And the basic theme that runs through it is, despite those disagreements, because of mutual respect for each other and mutual respect for each other's culture and traditions, we have been able to create some things that uh, otherwise wouldn't have existed before. Uh, let me just do a little thing here. These are here. Uh, this tells the story, all right, this tells the story of my experience with a really, really big section on Fu Han. So I published this in 2014. This, there are only three copies available, and they're all available here. The rest have been sold out. This Chinese version exists lots of copies that are on the shelf out there if anybody wants a Chinese one. And I'm currently working on another one. Uh, that will include some of this same material. But, uh, um, so some of that story is here. But when I wrote this, there was no way that I could not spend a tremendous, tremendous amount of time talking about my experience and work with Fu Han. And part of what I indicate is that nothing in my life um, would look like it does today if it were not for Fu Han. Oh, and another thing, I think most of foreign friends come here to wondering to how to get a Chinese green card. Because Mark gets a Chinese green card. And, Which I also yeah. have to attribute to her. Yes. Would you like to share with someone what, what, what is the key? Of the key. The Actually, what happened was I won the National Friendship Award in 2014, and that was based on Fu Han helping to put me in places and situations and giving me experience that caused me to become identified and recognized through that. And at the time that I received that in 2014, the award ceremony featured um, um, the premier, Li Keqiang, making a big announcement that he wanted the regulations for green cards to change and that one eligibility category was now going to be Friendship Award re uh, recipients. And it wasn't an automatic process. It took a good deal of fighting and pushing and basically pushing the government to be able to do that. And that was, I had to do some of that. She had to do a tremendous amount of that. And yeah, I, I of, remember you, you being nominated by, the, uh, by your school for four years. So every year yeah. I have to prepare these kind of big boxes of materials, right. documents. Because yeah. she and, put it together, all the materials. It's objectively, it's the, it's the nominating party's responsibility but she knew me better than anybody, so and she was able every to be more Every year, only 50 uh, Friendship Award winner uh, from one million foreign experts in China. So it's, e it's even rarer than a green card, mm -hmm. which is extremely rare. Yeah, it's very. So you have to think how to deal with the government. What does the government like and what to prepare for them? And, well, this is other story. Probably we don't have a time to talk about today. But uh, I'm not just dealing with uh, uh, Mark. And uh, now I'm working for, uh, I have other two um, called charity or NGO. Uh, one is uh, Global Talent. Today I have uh, colleagues here. And uh, we help foreigners in China. Okay, Global Talent, we are supported by the Sophia, by the government, and now we worked uh, for more than one year to any foreign, uh, uh, foreigners want to start your own business in China, we can help for free. We can, okay, we can get an address for free and uh, we can help you to set up the business. Okay, so this is a very good opportunity because I've been working on this for, uh, you know, Years. We talked a little bit. We won't. We won't digress. She and I talked a little quick a bit about this uh, mm -hmm. before, and so we're after we're done. Um, we'll have audience questions here in a moment, and then they're going to play a couple of songs, and then we'll be around having drinks. So if you want to talk to Fuhan or her colleagues, please do that once we're done with the program. You have something else you want to know? 
I want uh, one last question for Ms. Fu Han. Yeah. Um, give us three words or keywords, key phrases for our audience. Everyone, audience here, like, what would be the three keywords um, for you to give um, to our audience to help them to become someone like you, like cross-cultural enablers, to be able really to build the bridges, especially in this moment uh, when when the world is shifting so much and when there's a lot of movement over there. And I would like to hear your biggest key of uh, three keywords for your advice to mm. every one of us. For uh, foreigners, I want to say, come to China, stay, and uh, work, and don't need to try to fit in because you never. <laughs> I like how she looked at. at, at did, did, did you guys catch that little side eye? You know why? Okay, just because the Chinese people we just people by face. Okay, so you know. I totally have totally noticed. Foreigner. I totally have noticed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you yeah you you can work here and you know do, you you should find your goal your life goal here and uh, match Chinese speech. You know China growing very fast and developing very very fast. Even our gen uh, young generation we sometimes we can't catch up. You know some country developing through wars, but China we really. She's also looking at the American. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> But China, for these 40 years opening up, we're really developing really quick, really fast. Okay, before I was born, you know, my father told me they have little money, and when they buy things, they have to, they have to use some piao, tickets to buy things. Yeah, mm. special coupon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I know lots of foreigners come to China, my suggestion is, one, find a Chinese partner. Okay, this is very important because, because he or she knows how the Chinese uh, way to work. You know, China is big. You have to deal with North China people, South of China people, Southern China people like drink tea, Northern China people like drink wine. How, to, how do you deal with people drink wine and how do you people deal with people drink tea? Well, some people like both, you know. <laughs> Can I tell one story? Yeah. One story. Uh, several, many years ago, I was invited to sing at an event called the Beijing Villa Festival. And these were uh, developers. It was an award ceremony, award banquet for developers of big housing developments. And I was there to sing, and I'm sitted, sitting at the main table, and the man right next to me was the recipient of many awards. And he spoke no Chinese, I spoke no, no, he spoke no English, I spoke no Chinese. And a few months later, he contacts Fu Han. He had built this community uh, called Second Home between Nanjing and Yangzhou in uh, Jiangsu province. And he had already built a thousand homes. And he called Fu Han and said, we're gonna build 500 more. We're gonna build a big hotel that the Sheraton is going to manage. And we just signed a contract with the Jack Nicholas Golf Bill, uh, development company. And we'd, we're gonna have a press conference. And we'd like Mark to come and sing. So he says, ask him to give me a good price. So she tells me this, and I'm thinking, and I say, how about if we just tell him I'll come as a friend? And she said, okay, that's a good thing. And then I said, but you have to tell him I'm expecting him to pay for transportation and hotel. And she says, no, I refuse to do that. I said, you have to do that. She says, no, he knows that already. You said you're coming as a friend. And I said, absolutely, in the United States, if it's not all written in the contract, you can't count on anything. And she said, no, you will offend him. And finally, she didn't get me to agree, but she got me to shut up. 
So that's half the what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was she told him that, and two days later, his secretary called. His secretary called and says, "Tell us your flight information, and we will buy the tickets for you." So she was right. I had no conception that this is the way that things would be done, and I've had. I have a number of friends in entertainment fields, and a lot of times they speak wonderful Chinese, and they think that they can represent themselves, but the fact is they can't. They because one, people don't speak to them the same way, and two, these particular cultural particularities they're not familiar with. Okay, and this happened when Fu Han was very, very inexperienced as an agent. She just knew that not as an agent; she just knew it as a Chinese person. Well, there, there's a, thank you. There's a million <laughs> way to understand, um, million ways to understand how China works. And today's episode taught me at least a lot of things, including friendship, cultural intelligence, and being yourself. There's so much more to learn, but time is so limited. Uh, we want to give one more time pause to Fuhan and Mark. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Sure. Yes. Yes. You. We, we have time for a couple of audience questions, and then we will ha ask you to play. So please hold any last thoughts. Does anyone have any questions? I'll run the mic to you. Okay, back here in the back. One sec. Oh, well, yeah. look at that. All right. Uh, not, not, not a question, Fuhan. I'd just like to congratulate you on your movie and uh, Mark's cooperation. And meeting Isabella and the night was an experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to help more. So all the friends who come here, I really appreciate. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. Um, um, I would like to thank you, Fu Han, for telling a super inspiring story. I remember the other day I was uh, I was uh, watching an online short video about a guy eat. 50 packs of Korean spicy noodles. <laughs> and at the same day, I watched a girl uh, had this 20 minutes video about her uh, uh, talking about people judging her. And I was thinking, wow, this is, this is a, today people are, uh, <laughs> have all these worries. And today and now, I'm, I'm, I just watched this amazing uh, life stories from a 100 year, 104 years old lady that was super inspiring. Sometimes we wonder, um, why do we live? Is, is life worth living? And from this film, I was uh, really, I, I, I'm speechless. And thank you very much for telling her story. It means a lot. And Thank you. thanks for Brendan and Yingying for telling Fu Han's story. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think yeah. for another suggestion is for uh, foreign, not just uh, foreign friends come to China, also Chinese people. I think for our life, life is short. We need to do something meaningful, okay? Do something really worth something, okay? Yeah. We're all happy inside. A brief question for Fuhan. So, as a friend of Isabel, what uh, what did, what's the most admirable qualities uh, of human as you see in Isabel during the past years that you know her, and also what uh, what impressed you the most uh, by Isabel in your life? Thank you. Um, her friend and uh, Isabel is a great great woman. And uh, she is an educator in the in Beiwai, and uh, you know all our English, you know, uh, p teachers or whatever uh, from Beiwai, and uh, uh, she is very Le Guan. You know her English name is Isabel Joy Brown. Okay, before her marriage, Joy. She is really Joy. You know really happy and yeah joy yes mm -hmm. um, you know th through her life in China I think she must have faced a tremendously difficulty times for example the cultural revolution you know uh, 
lots of things. And in that time, he uh, sometimes has no food, you know, in the old days. Now we are very lucky. We, we, you know, we were born, now we have food, food everywhere, never starving. But uh, in her life, she faced uh, so many difficulty, but she is still joy. She is still happy. Uh, uh, on the yellow poster, that was the one where you signed up for the event, probably, unless you walked in. This QR code, it's going to cycle. Um, there's some documents on there that detail a bit of her. And then there's a link at the bottom. I linked this, this extensive, this website, Isabel's website. And when you realize, yes, all the things that we have all heard about the history of the last hundred years of China, she was here, except for like a brief time back in Canada. She was here. It's just unbelievable. Oh, uh, that's the questions done? Well, I ha well, no, I didn't say that. Oh, I thought you said one more. Okay. No. Any more questions? And she records uh, so many pictures, which China, uh, in the old days, we don't have a camera. Yeah, you can pass around. Yeah, I, yeah. I took the old pictures uh, to Sichuan to, uh, yeah, you can pass around all her, yeah. part of her, some of her pictures. This is in Hanyuan and Li Xian. I, I just uh, came back from Li Xian, which uh, she did her first uh, anthropology research in the Tibetan area. I came back uh, yesterday morning. Yeah, I went there and uh, I find out the friendship. That's why I talk about foreign friends come to China. You need to find a Chinese friend. In that days, um, Mm, Isabel lived in a local, uh, they call it the Rongren, the Tibetan uh, farmer home. And their friendship lasted 80 years. And when I went there, the old, the, the, uh, the old lady now is 90 years old. And uh, she told me, mm, when Isabel went there, Isabel was 23, she taught her a song. Don't tell him the song yet. Oh, okay. Don't tell him the okay. song yet. But the interesting thing is, uh, Isabel took a photo of uh, that lady's, you know, uh, the husband, you know, and I showed the picture to that old lady, and she can't recognize the husband, but she still remember the song Isabel taught her, and she was the same with me, and it's just a friendship. You know. Okay, we have time. And by the way, I misspoke because we changed the poster. HowChinaWorksPodcast.com, our website, there's an event page. We, we actually changed this, that code links to the bookworm page. So if you go to HowChinaWorksPodcast.com and find the event page for this, you will find this great link to more information on Isabel. Now, we probably have time for one more audience question, then a few closing comments here, and then some music, and then we can have some more conversation out, outside. Uh, this, this young lady looks very... Oh, she's ready. Hi. Um, uh, we all know that the relationship between uh, China and America right now is uh, not going very well. But in here, uh, in this very room, I saw some kind of harmony. So uh, I want to ask you, um, Mark and Fu Han, so what are your opinions about the things, the situation right now, and what's your expectations? about countries. Thank you. You or me? Okay, uh, I, okay. I can say that. Because the, the, the trade war, and uh, I understand very much because I'm now in the aviation business. Uh, this is really affect the, the business. But I think people are in common, okay? Uh, people in United States and in China, we. Whatever in the world, we have the common emotion. We have love, we have, you know, we cry, we have, we are people, okay? And uh, sometimes you just deal with people different ways, but uh, we are in, the, in common. That's very important. Okay, so uh, I have long admired China's patience. And I think 
much as to be advanced, there's an old expression that says, never argue with a fool, because sooner or later, no one will be able to tell the difference. And I think China is very wise by trying to avoid arguing. Okay, so uh, let me have one last thing and then we can go to some music. Uh, Fu Han indicated that one of the things when she started being my agent was that I paid her. Well, that's absolutely true. Unfortunately, what I have paid her will never match up to what she's paid me, which has nothing to do with money. But the work that she has done for me, the friendship, the assistance, the opportunities, the doors that she's helped to open for me, uh, I can't imagine ever putting a, a dollar, an RMB amount on that. And whatever it is would never be sufficient to be able to pay her back for all of that that she's done to me, uh, done for me. Okay, thank you, Fuhan. Thank you very and much. Yeah, thank you. Be so appreciated. <laughs> and you know what? I actually learned something from uh, foreign friends, from Mark, from different foreign friends. Uh, that's the uh, attitude. Okay, in China, our parents always say life is short and difficult. 人生苦短. Okay, everything is so difficult. Everything is cool, cool, cool. This is a Buddhist style, but. My foreign friends, like Isabel, like all the people, this is a, the life is a process. It's, a, it's a, you know, you have to enjoy it. Okay, enjoy. Enjoy every moment. Thank you Thank very you. much. So we would like to let, they're going to grab their instruments and we will be treated to a couple of songs. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so what we are going to do is two things. Uh, these are things that generally we don't do, but in honor of the occasion, we're going to do these two things. Uh, the first one, uh, all of the Chinese people will know, and we'd like to ask everyone to sing, because this is something, although I can sing a lot of Chinese songs, um, this is not one that I sing. And then the second one, Fu Han will We'll finish the story about the the uh, nine-year-old girl that Isabel taught the song to. Well, but... Except for the people who are involved, and as people pass by, right, they sing that. 
All right. Everybody and love their country, and uh, we love the world. We hope the world is peace. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do something next. The song that Isabel, 80 years ago, taught this then nine-year-old girl who is now 89 years old, and Fu Han just visited her village. It's a Tibetan village in Sichuan province, and Fu Han and this former nine-year-old girl sang the song together, and everybody is going to sing. I think everyone should be familiar with this song. We know this one. What's the title of this song? Roll, roll, roll your boat. Okay. Roll your boat. So I think in honor of that, in honor of uh, Isabel, we're going to do that brief rendition of that. All right. This side of the room, Fu Han side of the room. <clears throat> well, oh no, here, we'll start. We're going to sing it the way it's traditionally sung as a round, right? Everybody know what that is? Where one group starts and then another group starts. Okay, so we start. Row, row, row your boat, gently down the street. Alright, that's our first How China Works live event. We hope you enjoyed that. Please visit HowChinaWorksPodcast.com to find out more about this show, the other episodes. You can find out more information about Isabel and the documentary. You can find a link to the documentary. And also, don't forget, if you're going to be in Beijing, we have another How China Works live event in the works for September. Thank you again for listening. On behalf of my co-host, Ian Lee, I'm Brendan Davis, and we'll see you next week on How China Works.